Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer here. Welcome to uh, part six which of the installation of ESXi hosts in our Workstation uh, 17 uh, nested lab. So uh, part six agenda, we're gonna review, go over the plan and then we're actually gonna do an install of ESXi hosts on the Workstation 17. So just a few slides to set the stage and then we'll get right into uh, the busy work of getting this done. Okay. As you know, we're on part six here, but coming up very soon is part seven, which will be completing the, the vSphere environment, the vSAN ESCA is coming up, and then some performance checking. So we're rounding the corner. We're almost there. We're uh, finishing up real soon in the next uh, three parts or so. All right. So overall series goals. Uh, uh, we've done a, quite a bit. We've got OS, uh, you know, Windows 11 installed. We learned tips and tricks there. Workstation 17, more tips and tricks there, right? Uh, getting Windows 2022 server on, which was part four, which was a lot longer part than I expected, but a lot of goodness in there. Uh, and then we just got done setting up VCSA. Again, more tips and tricks there to do it right. Now we're working on the ESXi host, the three of them. We're going to finish that up, and then we'll be ready to get things configured and get going. Okay. So let's take a quick part or a quick look at uh, where we're at in the network diagram. So we're talking about these three ESA hosts down below. Now ESA is, is a vSAN term, vSAN ESA. I'm just calling my host ESA just to remind me that they're running vSAN ESA. So ESA 101, 2, and 3 is what we're looking at doing. Uh, of course, extending them down into those uh, Optane disks. And that breakdown kind of looks like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy this ESXi host and get the operating system installed. This is what I'm going with as far as my setup, right? 107 gigs of RAM, eight processors. But one thing to remember is when you install ESXi in a nested environment, you have to tick this box right here, which is uh, virtualization. And we'll go through how to do that, uh, but it needs to be done. This can cause a problem with Windows 11. If you go back and watch the OS install, we cover that topic and we explain how to fix it properly. Now, another thing that's really important about this setup that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're directing all the disk for this ESXi host to that very targeted uh, Optane drive. Uh, that Optane drive is super performant. And what I've done is I put three of them in my system so that each host has its own Optane disk and can perform well. Uh, that's a really good tip. If you want to go back and watch uh, workstation installation, we talk a bit more about that and what, how to choose the right drives and, and set up and things like that. All right, folks, uh, with that, that is all I have for you for slides today. Let's go ahead and get into the install. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, started. I've already opened up uh, workstation uh, 17. And as you can see, I've powered on our Active Directory controller and the VCSA. Uh, now, the VCSA is not necessary for this step because all we're doing is doing the installation of the host. But uh, DNS and other services like Time uh, should be here as I'm setting it up. Uh, setting up the, uh, the ESXi host is as easy as just going up to File and saying uh, New Virtual Machine. Okay, we're going to choose Custom. Okay. Now we could choose Workstation 17 here, right? Compatible with the ESX server, right? Or we could choose 7.0 and it kind of lists it out, right? But we're gonna choose 17. At least this is the steps I've done, right? Now I need to point it to my installer file. So let's go back to that. Oh, we were there, that one, and we're good. Okay, now it says it could not detect the operating system of this image. That's because it's 8.0 and it doesn't support 8.0 yet. And, and that's okay, everything should work fine. We're going to choose ESX here, and 7 is the highest I can choose. Now we're going to choose a name. So this is going to be uh, ESA 101. The important part is to redirect it to the correct disk, right? Because we want to make sure it lands on that Optane, that highly performant Optane disk, and then it's going to work out well for us. So we're going to put it right there on this, this 1.5 uh, terabyte Optane disk. Okay, next. Okay, processors. If you remember, we we're going to go with 8 on this. Okay, so we want to, I'm sorry, we want to do one processor of eight cores, because that's what I have underneath the hood. We have one socket uh, with 24 cores, and this, so we're going to use eight of those, basically. So one, one processor, right, one socket, and how many cores? Okay, the RAM we're going to do is 110 gigabyte. <laughs> well, let's get it up there. There it is. There 
There we go. Okay. Uh, for now, this networking is fine. We're going to fix this. I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, we'll do what's recommended. Change it to NVMe. And then create a new virtual disk. Okay, I'm gonna go with a recommended size, which is 142, but I usually choose store as a single file. It helps, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, now you might go in here and say boot disk. That way it's easier to identify it when you look at the individual files. Okay. Now at this point we can customize the hardware if we wanted to, but we're going to customize it uh, when we finish up here. So the VM should create. Okay. It's ready to go. We don't want to power it on at this time because we need to finish up a few other settings, uh, namely the hard disks. So let's go in and start adding those. So a hard disk, right? NVMe. Create a new disk. Okay, size is 290. Stores a single disk. And I'm just going to call this simply disk one. You can double check and make sure it's going to the folder we want it to, which it is. Sorry, which it is not. <laughs> okay, so again, we want to point it down here and make sure it hits that target. Okay, let's just copy that real quick, make it easy next time. Okay, finish. Okay, so let's add another disk. Remember, we need to add four of these. Perfect, that's where we want it to go. Finish. Add another one. Okay. Looking good, almost there. One more disk to add. All right, so there's our four disks. We've got our eight processors. Don't forget when you go up here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure this box is checked, so the virtualization uh, Intel uh, VTX, right? That needs to be checked here for the Intel processor. We've got our uh, boot disk, our ESA drives. Now the only thing we need to do is uh, finish up the uh, networking configuration. So that's gonna be quite a bit. We're gonna add quite a bit of NICs here. So network, 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 where'd you go? There he is. Finish, add, and we're going to add a total of six of them. And our last one. Okay. I like to choose OK at this point and get this reordered to make sure it comes out clean. Okay. Then I go back in, edit. Now it'll straighten out those adapters. So I want to go here with uh, 10 network because these are going to be used for the management layer, right? This is that 10 network on our network design. Then we come down here to our 11 network. Now what you'll need to do is uh, I'm going to repeat this uh, three times. This is host one. And then I have host uh, uh, two and three that I have to also create. Uh, we're just going to cover doing one host. There's no reason to cover all three. It's the same settings. Go on, you. There it goes. So 10, 11, and 13. Management, uh, you know, other other uh, replication networks, et cetera, and vSAN ESA networks ready to go. Okay, that's it. Once this is done, uh, we're ready to boot this uh, VM and get the installation uh, complete. So I'm going to choose OK. 
and we're going to power it on. And this is where it should boot to the, uh, uh, the installation of ESXi. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let it boot, and then we'll get going again in a second. All right, it's just about done booting. Let's take a look. It's starting to get some information here. We can see that it's showing that we've got the Intel Gold 6252 uh, CPU underneath the hood and 110 gigs of RAM. So that's uh, kind of a good confirmation that uh, those are coming through. Then we also have the, the build number uh, at the top, uh, kind of showing that it's ESXi 8. All right, so once ESXi uh, 8 is uh, done with this initial uh, kind of booting, we're going to be prompted with this screen here to click enter and continue on. Okay, F11 to accept. Now it's going to go through and kind of scan the devices and uh, get everything ready to go for us to install it. So if everything works well, you should see your boot drives here. So 142 is the boot drive, and the 290s below are the um, going to be used for ESA. So we want to choose our boot drive, which is highlighted there. Okay, uh, default. Okay. <clears throat> Enter in your password and country code, of course. Oh, must have a typo. Let's try again. All right, there we go. All right, and then basically hit F11 to do the install. And away it goes. So I'm going to let this uh, complete its install. What it's going to do is it's going to go through this, get done, and then it's going to reboot, and we'll be at the... Uh, D-U-C-I, uh, the, the user interface where we can uh, finish our configuration. All right, so now it's going to reboot and it's asking us to remove the installation media. So you can do that. You can go over here and go into settings, right? And then you'll find the, uh, the boot ISO here. So we could just uh, unconnect it right there. Done. Now we just hit enter and it should reboot. And when it reboots into the D-U-C-I, then I'll bring the screen back up. All right, so now it's going back through its uh, reboot process here. You should see a bunch of different things getting loaded in and getting ready to go. And then eventually it's going to go to our traditional uh, black and yellow screen, which is what's called the DUCI. Uh, and then we can uh, finish configuring it with its IP address and other information. All right, so our um, ESXi host has booted, but if you notice, it got a DHCP address, which is perfectly okay. Uh, we expected that. So that's a good thing. We, let's go in and test it now. So if I switch to the Active Directory controller and actually log in, you can see we're able to get the uh, uh, web host interface, our host client, up and running, right? We can also do a ping real quick and check to make sure we can ping it. And absolutely, we're getting good communication. So that means that 10 network is working perfectly. We can communicate through the host between those two, and we're starting to get some results here. I'm going to choose OK here. And now we're into uh, the DUCI. Now we could do some configuration from here. I just find it easier to do it through uh, this interface uh, to get get the job done. All right. All right. So let's get it. Go ahead and log in. Okay. We're on the configure management network. Just make sure we're on the right network adapter, which is that adapter zero. That's correct. No VLANs needed. Let's get the IPv4 set up. And we just need to change this to 101. Of course, make sure we're updating our um, spreadsheet as we go along. Uh, default gateway is 222, and that is correct. So we're good there. Now we're going on DNS configuration. Okay, we want it to 222. Its name is going to be ESA 101.nested.local. Okay, enter. No suffixes needed. Now we go into IPv6. I usually disable IPv6 because I don't just don't use it. Okay. And now I'm going to escape out. Say yes. And it's going to actually reboot the system. Once it reboots, uh, then we'll go back to the Active Directory controller, confirm that we've gotten into it, and we should be uh, good to go with this host. 
All right, so the system has rebooted. You can see it has its name and it has its uh, updated address, which is correct, and no more IPv6 information. Okay, so let's go back here. This is gonna fail because this is the old address, so we're just gonna close this out for now. And let's reopen it. And now, actually, we should be able to go into ping, right? And let's do ping ESA 101. Whoop. Okay, it's got it. Now let's ping its fully qualified domain name and just make sure that it's working fine too. Nested.local. And again, able to ping it, able to see it. So let's go into its address here. And we're getting into it pretty quick. And there it is. All right, and we might just check networking. Again, I think we're gonna have all our physical NICs there should be listed without a problem. There they all are. Everything is good, no major errors. Uh, this VM is done. So now what I need to do is repeat that process and build ESA uh, 102 and 103 following the same steps. When I'm done with all that, here's what I recommend folks do. Power this off, power all these off when you got them done, right? Get them all powered off. I start with my host first, uh, then my VCSA and Active Directory controller last, right? That's kind of the order I follow. Uh, get these all powered off. And then what you wanna do is create a backup. Backups are easy. So I'm just using that 3.7 terabyte drive, right? I made a folder called Virtual Machine Backups. And what I'm gonna do is go into each one of these folders and I'm just gonna right click and copy it when they're powered off, right? and then paste it uh, into this folder. So that's really important. Right now is a great time to make a backup of all your VMs. We haven't done any uh, VCSA, uh, or excuse me, yeah, VCSA configuration. We haven't done anything to it at all. It's nice and clean. It's a perfect state for you to back this up, especially if you have the space, even if it's offsite or a different drive, I would just do it. Why? Because you might want to rebuild this environment. And what a quicker way to do it than just restoring from your backup. All you gotta do is copy those VMs or maybe you wanna build a two node system or a different system or you wanna make it look different than the other one was. Go ahead and do it. You can absolutely do all those things. So I'd highly recommend backing up these VMs once you build these uh, last two ESA hosts and I think you're gonna be really happy with it. So folks, that's all I had for you today. Uh, we're all done uh, getting um, or ESA host set up, ESXi host set up, right? And when we come back in the next part, we'll be talking about uh, getting it all set up in the, the VCSA vCenter. So thank you so much. I do hope you have a great day and we'll talk with you soon. Take care, everyone.